Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. And I just want to tell, finish telling you all about the man with the million dollar voice. He used to always walk around and say, I'm the man with a million dollar voice. Exclusively, Reverend C.L. Franklin used to always call himself the man with the million dollar voice. I often wonder how God give a man such gifts to captivate the audience, million dollar voice, and he's around molesting his own daughter and everything that come into his path. Let me take you into how the man with the million dollar voice wound up. The man with the million dollar voice had been molesting kids all of his life, including his own Aretha Franklin. He was always second to Martin Luther King, but the man with the million dollar voice, if y'all really look at it, he was howling the paper and he was helping the civil rights movement just as well as Martin Luther King. And he was sort of jealous of Martin Luther King. And he would always say, I got Riri. That was his famous statement. I got Riri. And another famous statement, after all, everything went down. Aretha Franklin told him, looked at him and told him, Daddy, you did a damn good of fucking your own reputation up your damn self. You did a hell of a thing in fucking your own reputation up. You don't need my help to fuck your reputation up because you been did that many years ago when you impregnated me and you know I know it and you know you know it. So let me tell you how Brother Reverend C.L. Franklin wound up. I imagine he raped somebody's kid. He molested somebody's kid. And they didn't like it. So they waited on his ass to come home. Because whosoever kid he molested was awful hot. And they never found who shot him. It has never been solved. It is an unsolved mystery. Who shot Rem C.L. Franklin and why? But we all know the why. Molesting somebody's little daughter. Understand. We all really know why. Why do you think the police never uncovered who shot Rem C.L. Franklin, the biggest priest in the country? He go on the line with Biggie and Tupac. He is another one. He was the biggest preacher in the country besides Martin Luther King. He gets shot in his murder. He didn't die. He got shot. Whoever shot him was never found. Reverend Franklin wound up at a convalescent home called Pembroke, right there on Woodward and Claremont. That's where he lived the last two years of his life out, and that's a fact. He was in Pembroke, old folks' home, for the last two years, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. Aretha Franklin came and seen him all of two or three times in two years. Understand that Aretha Franklin came a few times, very few times. She had him in a convalescent home named Pembroke, right there on Claremont and Woodward. That's where Reverend C.L. Franklin died at, in a convalescent home, after whoever's child he molested put it on his ass, broke in his house, didn't take no money. This the million dollar voice, now he, tell, he got millions. Didn't take not one dime. What he did was put some lead in his ass for molesting his kid, and we all know that's the truth. So this is the man with the golden voice. God then gave him a golden voice. And I often wonder, because y'all kind of leave me unclear with the story of Michael. Y'all said it was Lucifer. But somebody else tell me his name was Michael in heaven. And after God threw him out of heaven, he became Lucifer. Because he was in heaven doing all the devil's work. Under the name of Michael, who was controlling all of the music, all of the angels who sung the music and the greetings for God when he wanted to hear his glorious music. Michael was controlling it. And they say 
He had all the angels acting out and God kicked him out of heaven and that's when his name became Lucifer. That's another story they tell me out the Bible. Y'all tell me if it's true. Because to me, it's just a story out of a book. Understand that. To me, it's a wonderful story out of a book. And that's how I look at it. Because I often wonder, how can God give Reverend C.L. Franklin such gifts and he plays with him? And see, I told y'all, when you play with God, look how Reverend C.L. Franklin went out. What, nobody coming to visit him? He basically spent two years a lot of his life, the last two years of his life at a convalescent home, and very few people came to visit him. See, they knew he was a molester. So after he got shot, you would have thought everybody from the church going to be coming up here visiting him. It was direct opposite. Very few people from the church went up to Primbrook convalescent home to see him after my man dealt with him for raping his little girl. Understand that. So they think they can mischieve mischieve all of you and deceive all of you. They can deceive us, but they cannot deceive God because he's watching it all. He didn't gave this man the million dollar voice. And he out here raping and molesting little girls his entire life, right down to his own daughter. So look at how he turned out in a convalescent home for the last two years of his life. Money didn't mean that then he had plenty of it. He couldn't even spend it. He had plenty of money and couldn't spend it. He had plenty of money, but he couldn't spend it. He had plenty of money, but he couldn't spend it. Laid up there in the convalescent home, damn near a paraplegic. After raping somebody's child, they didn't want none of his dirty money. They broke in his house. They could have shot him and took all the money. But that let you know and that let the police know this was about something very personal and they knew he was a molester of little kids and that's why the police never solved him, never solved who shot Rem C. L. Franklin, the biggest pastor in the country besides Martin Luther King. He go right on the list with Notorious B.I.G. He go right on the list with Tupac. These are all huge, influential people. And their crimes have not been solved. Who shot or killed them? Their crimes. And he's a pastor now. Tupac and Biggie, y'all say they was rappers. So they don't matter. He's a pastor. In fact, damn near the biggest in the country. And he can be murdered, practically. And it's never solved. Because he was a molester. And that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Another fact I want y'all to know. Donald Trump does not believe in the Bible or God at all. He believes in his money. And it's awful funny. He is the man who pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick. Donald Trump pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick. Now Kwame Kilpatrick come out and he said he preacher, preaching. And the man who pardoned him couldn't preach if it counted on his life. The man who pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick was Donald Trump, and he does not believe in God. He cannot quote scripture from the Bible. That's amazing to me. And Kwame Kilpatrick walked straight out of penitentiary, and he says, I'm a Christian, and I'm finna serve the Lord, and I'm finna be a preacher. It's amazing how Donald Trump let him out, and he became a preacher. Barack Obama left him in there. Understand, the black president could have pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick, but they had personal issues. He had personal issues with him. They had personal issues with each other because Tom Joyner had geeked it up and said Kwame Kilpatrick would be the first black president. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember on the Tom Joyner show? Because I remember it very well. On the Tom Joyner show, Tom Joyner in his show predicted that Kwame Kilpatrick would be the first black president. And you see how that turned out. He became the first black preacher. 
that should have been president. That's what he became. He became not the first black president, the first preacher that should have been the first black president. So don't forget that. Don't forget that. Kwame Kilpatrick was slated to be the first black president in our history. Understand that. And Tom Joyner in the Tom Joyner Morning Show geeked that up between him and Barack Obama. If y'all don't remember that, because I remember that. Do you remember that? When they chose Kwame Kilpatrick to be the first black president ever. And it must have upset Barack Obama because he didn't pardon him. He left him for the racist. And who would ever believe that Donald Trump as a racist would have pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick? But as I said to y'all, there's a little good. I told y'all, if y'all know what a tenth is, that's how much good you got in Donald Trump. And he pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick. And Kwame Kilpatrick is a preacher. Now, you'll never hear him say anything bad about Donald Trump. How can he? Because that's who freed him. The Lord did not free you, Kwame Kilpatrick. Mr. Kwame Kilpatrick, please hear what I'm saying to you. The Lord did not free you. Donald Trump did. Please, Mr. Kwame Kilpatrick, hear what I'm saying to you. The Lord did not free you. A racist named Donald Trump free Kwame Kilpatrick, and he was the main one hollering about racist throughout his whole battle with the press. Kwame Kilpatrick was the main one hollering about race during his old dispute with the press and turned out a racist is who pardons him and now he's singing the song of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ did not pardon him. Donald Trump did. Please know that the signature on the paper in which freed Kwame Kilpatrick out of federal penitentiary, a 28-year sentence, came with the name of Donald Trump. It didn't have the name of Jesus Christ on it. It had the name of Donald Trump. If you had wrote the name of Jesus Christ on that pardon paper, Mr. Kilpatrick, you would still be sitting in federal penitentiary, and that show you how much these white folks really believe in Christianity. They use it to terrorize us just like what they did to you. Throw you in penitentiary and terrorize you, and when you come out, you'll be singing a song of Jesus Christ. But let me tell all of y'all something so y'all know one thing. All of us who've been incarcerated, all of us, right down to me, and I'm speaking on myself right now. My place of prayer was in the shower, in the penitentiary, in the county jail. They used to say, Eddie, you the cleanest motherfucker it is. You take more showers than anybody I have ever seen. Any of the niggas who locked up, was locked up with me in the county jail in Macomb or Detroit will tell you that nigga took more showers than anybody I ever seen. Everybody on the rock used to say that. Cause the shower was my prayer place. When I get frustrated and I needed somewhere to calm down for a minute and channel in on where I'm at and what I got to do. The shower was my prayer place. I took so many showers, and I was in that shower praying to God to get me out of here. I was in that shower praying to God four, five times a day, get me the hell out of here. And anybody else in penitentiary going to be praying for Allah to get them the hell out of there. Understand that. So my prayer place in the county jail was the shower. That's where I went in and channeled in and did my prayer, took my shower, came on out straight, go ahead on, eat a, 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 a goodie, and lay my ass down. Understand that and relax. Because I wasn't taking no Cinequine and Seroquel 
running my goddamn self crazy. I refuse to take any Cinequam and Seroquel. That's what they give to all the lifers. So you will know. When you get life, you will learn what Cinequam and Seroquel is because they're going to feed it to your ass. And they tell me all the people who used to take it. They used to stay, sleep, wake up. Man, you had the most horrific dreams in your life off of Cinequam and Seroquel. And that's what all your killers and murderers is on right now. All of them. As soon as they come in the county jail for a murder or killing and know they're going to be there, they jump and want to sleep their life away. You should have thought about some Cinequam and Seroquel before you went out there and did that dope fiend dumb shit that you did. Now you done went out there and did all that dope fiend shit. Now you come in here and you want to sleep your life. Give me some Cinequam and Seroquel. That's the most valuable shit in the penitentiary. They try not to swallow anything. And if you have a Cinequam, a Seroquel pill, a nigga will give you all of his commissary for some Cinequam and Seroquel. And all he got to do is sign up and he can get that for his motherfucking self. Wow. I can't understand niggas, man.